well, this is an interesting observation. There are still so many people in the Tesla community that have never tried FSD beta. The free FSD trial in North America will fix that a little. I personally know many all-in Tesla investors that haven't even tried. It's going to be interesting to see the reactions. If you are a Tesla stock investor and you rely on FSD when you model Tesla stock, I think you should try FSD at least once. There's something fishy going on here. Newfoundland and Labrador extends EV rebate program to 2025 but excludes Tesla. That's because they are no longer going to include sales that don't go through dealers. That's really weird. Is someone getting paid by someone? Their explanation is basically, um, um, yeah, we, 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 we just do whatever we want. Uh, it's our decision. They gave no explanation. At best, this is just pure incompetence. We might have a new trim of the Model Y in Europe. Tesla Model Y, long range, rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive received European certification. So maybe it will be built there. It would have 373 miles. This is not EPA range. In Europe, they have slightly different standards, but clearly you would have more range. And because of instant torque, I really wouldn't mind driving a rear wheel drive EV, especially a Tesla, because Tesla software is the best. So therefore it will adjust any slippage instantly. As long as I have snow tires, I'm okay driving uh, this vehicle in snow. At first, when I tried it, I was like, hmm. logically, I know I read about it. It makes sense on paper when you look at all of the technicalities and how fast it adjusts the slippage. But I still wasn't sure. And then I tried to lose control of the vehicle in a parking lot and I couldn't. And then I took a gasoline powered all wheel drive vehicle and with no tires, of course, both of these. And I was able to lose control very easily. And then later I tried doing the same test with my all-wheel drive Tesla. And that, that, that was next level good. So I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't get all-wheel drive, even if it's an EV for snow. Get it if you can afford it. It's still quite a bit better. With a rear-wheel drive Tesla, I wasn't able to lose control, but I was able to get the car sort of turn a bit too much but in the all-wheel drive tesla i couldn't even do that so if safety is your top 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 priority definitely get the all-wheel drive if you can afford it and you need to drive in snow the new york times is going after elon musk hard tesla and china built a symbiotic relationship with credits workers and parts that made elon musk ultra rich now his reliance on the country may give Beijing leverage. Oh, and there's a community node under it already. Here's a rebuttal from Tesla's head of policy, Rohan Patel. As usual, the New York Times framing is thoroughly lacking context and common sense. The insinuation that our global expansion negatively affected Fremont and California is just warped logic. It is not a zero-sum game. We only sell cars made in the U.S. in the U.S. They don't sell vehicles made in china in the us how come aren't they going after apple all of their stuff is made overseas unlike with tesla then there are low interest loans in china now he says these are not particularly significant in fact much much less in comparison to almost any available set of industrial manufacturing incentives in north america europe and other markets in asia i know this because we have a constant stream of countries and states trying to incent tesla to invest so it's a bit like let's say china going after tesla because oh you are benefiting from the 7500 dollars credits in the us Everybody benefits from these. I do like these rebuttals from Tesla. Now, is New York Times completely wrong about everything here? Doesn't China have some leverage over Elon Musk? Well, you don't hear Elon criticizing China, but he does criticize the US government a lot for certain issues. I think Elon Musk is well aware that if he started criticizing the Chinese government, Tesla would no longer be able to sell in China. So I think that in particular is a fair point to make. But to imply that China alone made Elon Musk ultra rich? <laughs> no, sorry, that, that's, that's too far. It made Elon richer, sure, but China alone did not make Elon Musk rich. We might see a new Elon Musk interview with Tesla owner Silicon Valley. I like their previous interview with Elon Musk. Elon replied to this question, Elon, would you be down to doing an interview on Tesla manufacturing? I might be getting to the point 
where I've overseen the construction of wider range of manufacturing systems than anyone. Managing a global supply chain is also very difficult and underrated tactics wins battles, but logistics supply chain wins wars. Would you be open to discussing with me? This is a long story. If it does happen, sounds like it would be a long interview then. Ooh, someone's really dunking on FSD. Unless you are sitting in the back seat like a Waymo, this is just a lot of smoke. This was in reply to the post from James. One of my followers just sent me a DM that FSD drove him and his family from his house in downtown urban Montreal. And many of you yesterday left comments that this city is incredibly difficult to drive in. So from downtown urban Montreal to his lake house, 90 minutes outside the city, zero interventions. He had never used FSD to take this route before. And here's a big question. Can Waymo do this right now? Can it? Can any other company do this? James saw the criticism and he replied to it. Farzad also clearly agrees with this. He reposted it. Here's the way we need to be thinking about this, in my opinion. And please remember, I have been, if not the most, then one of the most vocal FSD critics for years in the bull crowd. <laughs> he was indeed very critical. Is 12.3 perfect? No, obviously not. But it is a 10x improvement over V11. That in and of itself is impressive v11 was crap you may say okay but what is most impressive in my opinion is that this progress was made over the course of a few months on the new code and if you remember when the first v12 videos leaked was it good was it even better than v11 in, in some parts yeah but it still still does a few silly things if you remember and that was january of this year. So a few months of work is 10 times better than the years of previous work. And it seems to work well in places outside of Omar's backyard for a change, including Canada, specifically Montreal, which I've seen many people call one of the most, if not the most difficult city in all of North America to drive in. I don't know if it is the most difficult city to drive in, but it's a bilingual city, which probably makes it a bit more confusing for FSD beta. It's certainly very difficult to drive in the city. What will 12.4 bring and how quickly will it keep improving? That is what matters most. Critics need to open up their minds to this possibility, see what is happening and be willing to change their minds. Now, actually, I hope they don't see what's coming. I hope. They don't change their minds until it is glaringly obvious that massive progress has already been made in a sense that, oh yeah, Robotaxi is definitely coming fairly soon and uh, the take rates are already up of FSD. The reason why I say that is because I want to keep buying Tesla stock at cheaper prices. At this point, there seem to be just too many people having really good experiences with V12 or V12 to not be monumentally better than V11. But I still want to try it for myself until I come to my own final conclusion.